Hi, I'm Bob Rubart with the Oracle Technology Network, and my guest is Stephen Feuerstein. Stephen is an architect with Oracle's database tools team, the author of Oracle PLSQL Programming, now in its sixth edition from O'Reilly, and he's a keynote speaker at the Great Lakes Oracle Conference coming up on May 13th and 14th right here in my hometown, Cleveland, Ohio. How you doing, Stephen? I am doing great. It's fun being an architect at Oracle Corporation. <laughs> All right. So the, the title of your Great Lakes Oracle Conference keynote is Coding Therapy for Software Developers, also known as How Does This Code Make You Feel? Will you be channeling Sigmund Freud during your presentation? Well, certainly I've learned a lot from Sigmund over the years, but I've decided to go off in my own direction. So the basic <laughs> idea behind coding therapy for software developers is that software is written by humans for the most part. And that means that we use our brains. Programmers, I hope, use their brains an awful lot. What we don't really factor into that process by and large is that since we're using our brains, we're also using our bodies. And what that means is that the way we do things in general is largely impacted by our genes, basically who our parents were, and our psychology, what our parents did to us. And if we, don't, if we don't take these things into account, if we don't really have some sort of basic understanding of our own selves as human beings, it's very hard to realize the impact that can have on your programming, either to correct for it or to take advantage of it. So really, the, the coding therapy for software developers is about human physiology and human psychology and how it applies to software. And I put it in the framework of, of, of therapy because I just like to have some tongue-in-cheek fun, and I make sure at the start of every... Every keynote, look, folks, you know, therapy is a very valuable tool, and, you know, I've done it, and I'm sure everybody else has had, you know, I want to make sure nobody feels like I'm mocking them or, th or therapists, but it's essentially a launching point. So I do confessional therapy, I do dream therapy, game therapy. I think the favorite one, at least when I first talk about it, is couples therapy, <laughs> uh, DBAs and developers, and developers and their managers. I do two separate couples therapy sessions. And, uh, you know, it's basically just a way to introduce all sorts of ways of thinking about how to program and, and, and kind of recognizing what your brain is doing while you're programming to make you more effective. This strikes me as, uh, as not something that you just stumbled on over the last week or so. Uh, how long have you been thinking about this particular aspect of software development? Well, not to make my presentation sound old, but I've been doing my coding therapy talk for probably a couple of years now with, in various forms. And... Um, how did it come about? Well, I think how it came about partly is that, uh, you know, I know one thing. Uh, I'm an architect at Oracle Corporation. I just rejoined Oracle on, on the 17th of March. It's, it's very exciting. And I have the title architect, which is the same title as Tom Kite, which is very intimidating because Tom is an, not only a generalist, he's not only wide but deep in the way he understands Oracle technology. I am probably the most narrowly specialized person you'll ever meet in your life from a technology standpoint. I know PLSQL. And that's virtually all I know. And what that also means, among other things, is that I've been doing the same talks around the same content pretty much for 20 years. I mean, obviously, every new version of Oracle has new features, though the rate of change in PLSQL has been slowing in the last couple of releases. There's still lots of good stuff. And by the way, my second talk at Glock is on Oracle 12C PLSQL features. But the bottom line is that I do a lot of the same talks over and over again. I get bored. And I figure if I'm getting bored, it's hard not to believe that the people listening to me aren't getting bored. So I'm always looking for different ways of presenting, and I always like to have fun because it seems like then I have more fun and the audience has a lot more fun. So honestly, I don't really remember why I stumbled upon the idea of coding therapy. I don't think I was in therapy at the time. So probably, <laughs> probably could have been, should have been. Um, I certainly have been doing a lot of reading or had been a lot of reading at that point about best practices in programming. And, and basically, you know, there were a lot of people who have written about the ideas that I raise in, in, in coding therapy are not particularly new ideas, I don't think. So I was sort of like taking ideas from other places and putting them into this new form. It, uh, one of the things that's always struck me about the, the software development world is that the, uh, the, this career choice is as much about lifestyle as it is about, about a career. Um, how much of that plays into what you're talking about about this? I mean, there's a particular personality type that I think it's become almost a cliche now, but it is associated with, with software development. Mm -hmm. And how much does that feed into what you're talking about? 
Well, I definitely play on a lot of those stereotypes, though I would say that at this point, and I think particularly in the Peel SQL community, the stereotypes probably fall fairly flat. So the, old, the stereotype of the old days when the programmer community was relatively small was all about those obsessive, compulsive, highly logical people who just want to like sit at their computers day and night and drink Diet Coke and eat their Oreo cookies and, you know, and keep on going. And obviously there are still some of us like that around. Um, but it, there's also such a vast community of developers that, of course, any type of person you can imagine can also be a programmer. And particularly in the PL SQL world, I think it's not true, that idea of this obsessive, compulsive person who just can't bear to take himself away from the computer, because PL SQL is a very accessible language. And I have run into many, many people over the years uh, who have said that they used to be a data analyst, they used to be a business analyst. I was an electrician, one of my favorite stories I ever heard from a, a reader. I went to a conference and this guy came up afterwards and says, Stephen, thank you so much. I owe my career, I owe my current family happiness to you. And like, wow, it doesn't get better than that. And he said that he was an electrician. I think he worked at a steel mill in, in Indiana. The steel mill shut down. He went back to community college and decided to try programming, got a hold of my book. And like two years later, was a successful Oracle developer. His wife could stay home with their children, which is what they really wanted to be able to do. And they had a good life. So... One of the things about PL SQL that I think have made it both a success, a really enormous success in the database programming world, um, but also somewhat limiting perhaps in its perception from the outside world, is that PL SQL is a fairly simple, straightforward, highly readable language. So we can all enjoy it, we can all do well with it without being crazy hackathoner programmers <laughs> you know, who, who like to do awk and set and grep and node.js and who knows what. We like to write readable code. if. Stephen went to the store to buy groceries then, he needs to bring his wallet, whatever. Um, so from that standpoint, coding therapy and my ideas go well past, they're much broader than those stereotypes, but I certainly do plan them. And one of the ways that I, that I talk about it, in confessional therapy, which is all about how important it is to admit that you don't know something, admitting ignorance. Because if you hide ignorance, if you, in your ego-saturated environment, if you can't admit you don't know something, you're just injecting bugs into your application left and right. And in general, humans don't like to admit that they're wrong. And, and actually, I, I take it a step back. I start by talking about birds. So in general, creatures, evo creatures who have evolved in our, in our planet try to hide weakness because if you expose weakness, you're more vulnerable. And particularly for birds, the birds fly in a flock. And the ones that stray from the flock because they're not strong enough to keep up, they're the ones that are snatched and eaten. Yeah, they become so eagle like, poop. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> now, I'll use that in my talk. You, you don't want to become eagle poop. I'll, I'll, I'll tell them it came from you. Okay. And, um, and it's even worse. So, so we have evolved, I think, as, as creatures to hide weakness. And it's even worse for software developers because in this modern society that's so driven by and dominated by software, we are wizards. Most people have no idea how we do what we do. And if they really knew, they wouldn't think we were such hotshots. In fact, <laughs> I'm not sure they think we're such hotshots because we make so many mistakes. So much software has so many bugs in it. It's really amazing that they give us as much rope to hang ourselves with as, as they do. But because we're seen as wizards, that we know every, everything, we, we're magical, it's even harder for us to admit we don't know things. So part of what my talk is in, in confessional therapy is how to mitigate, how to, how to pu pull people away from that feeling that they always have to pretend they know and the value of it, it, admitting ignorance. That uh, sounds like advice we could all use, regardless of every profession. Every part of our lives, that's right. That's right. It's not most of... I don't know if anything I talk about in this session is really only for software. It's really drawn from life and then applied to software. Wow. I've been talking with Oracle architect and PL SQL expert Stephen Feuerstein, one of the keynote speakers at the Great Lakes Oracle Conference coming up May 13th and 14th here in Cleveland, Ohio. Stephen, thanks for your time. It was great fun. Thank you, Bob.